and you want to test out your handhelds before I officially start and they know what they can cut out? I think you both Hello. know what microphones do. Testing one, two, three. That, that hat oh. is fabulous. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Heritage Foundation and our Douglas and Sarah Allison Auditorium. We, of course, welcome those who join us on our heritage.org website on this occasion. For our guests here in-house, we would ask that courtesy to see that our mobile devices have been silenced. And, of course, those watching online are welcome to send questions or comments to us at any time, simply emailing speaker at heritage.org. Welcoming our guest and leading our conversation is Genevieve Wood. Ms. Wood serves as Senior Communications Advisor and Senior Contributor to the Daily Signal, Heritage's multimedia news organization. She previously served as Heritage's Vice President of Marketing and oversaw our Leadership for America program. Prior to joining us here at Heritage, she worked for a variety of political, policy, and media organizations, including the Family Research Council, Republican National Committee, Cato Institute, Manhattan Institute, Susan B. Anthony List, and, in, and NPR. I'm so glad, Genevieve, you could finally settle down with a job. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Genevieve Wood. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, as you can see, I, I ran out of other employers to work with, so now that I'm at Heritage, I have to, I have to stay. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest today, and I know she doesn't need a big introduction because I know many of you just see her and you automatically know who she is. Uh, but you haven't always been at Fox News. Harris got her start also in the local TV market. She worked in Kansas City, she worked in Minneapolis, a host of, of different places before settling at Fox, uh, where now, as you know, she's the co-host of Outnumbered and the anchor of Outnumbered Overtime. Uh, and I just saw her on the air, she was literally on up until I think about 2 o'clock before coming before coming over here. So thank you for making time for us. Oh, here. Of course, the IG report was dropping, so it was tons of breaking we news. We saw that. I was like, I hope they don't hold on to her and say she can't come. Uh, we're gonna, and we're going to have plenty of time for you all to ask questions. We're going to have a conversation first. But she's here as a news anchor, and somebody can talk about a lot of things in the news. But she's also here today as an author, and I would say maybe a life coach. Uh, if you haven't picked up her book yet, it just came out last week. It's called a military, well, Nine Rules of Engagement, A Military Brat's Guide to Life and Success. And I've had the pleasure of reading through it over the weekend. And one of the things that she talked about, and I would say the whole book, if you would say, is really a, a life lesson and can be life lessons. And one chapter in particular, I think, speaks to it. But the whole book is really filled with concrete advice to help readers discover what Harris refers to as the mother of all goals, living your purpose. And I think every chapter in here that gives advice really is, is pointing towards, towards that. So Harris, let me ask you first, why did you decide to write the book? Well, you know, I grew up military. I was born on an army base in Georgia. And, you know, I'm often asked uh, with different audiences that I speak to uh, through my motivational speaking, why is it that you are so confident in what you do? Why do you feel like you are right where you need to be? And I have practiced my entire life the nine rules of engagement that I learned about in my household. Uh, and part of that is figuring out what your mission is in life, devising your mission, putting great people around you, people who you know will watch your back, who don't gossip. I don't know if anybody knows anybody in here who gossips, right? Um, who are not negative, uh, what I call recruiting your special forces. So I, I wanted to take that military background and overlay it on what I see are some challenges right now for people. We've got a job market that has room for people now. And that means that more and more are going to be at every stage in their lives, uh, are going to be auditioning for jobs, interviewing, and how do you show your best self when you go in? What are your tools um, what, that you have in your toolkit that you know you should be taking out? How do you missionize your life is my, my question for you. Um, are you supported in your everyday lives to make your dreams come true? And as we become a more skilled and differently skilled uh, work environment for people with those jobs that have opened up, uh, it, it's interesting to see how well prepared you'll be for competition. So I think it's it's very important to do this now. I also see new threats around the world, just militarily, and I see our military responding and changing in ways that we can all le learn from. You know, our ability to be resilient when it looks like the odds are against us, our ability to change course when things aren't quite working out, we're needing to do some of that around the world. And as we meet with countries like North Korea, um, and potentially, we don't know what's coming down the road, but the last president met with Cuba. These are communist-type 
nations and rogue regimes and whatnot, um, our military's task and purpose changes a bit. And its mission is sharpened in different ways. We know that cyber, for instance, is something that we need to pay more attention to now. So I'm looking to the military, as I always have, to kind of answer back on challenges that may force, that may face us. I do want to say one thing, if I can. So today is June 14th. It is the day that the military was founded in the United States of America. I think some of you know, more than 200 years ago. It is also my father's birthday. So if he were ever looking for a reason that combat pilot dad, um, he looked no farther than the day he was born. I think the good Lord was just trying to make it easy for him. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. It's also the president of the United States birthday as well, a commander in chief. So this is an interesting day, and I'm glad to be here with all of you. So thank you for having me. We're delighted to have you. Uh, you, you referred to BRAT on the book. I didn't... Yeah. Does anybody know what BRAT stands for? Well, we know the meaning. Yeah, we know the meaning. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realize it stands for Born, Raised, and Transfer. Yeah, it's an acronym. You know how the military loves its acronyms. <laughs> But I can be the other way, too, I suppose. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and it, it really talks about that ability to adjust to any situation. And I happen to be born on a military base. I was raised on them in this country, in Germany. Um, and I certainly have transferred quite a bit, and that is not exclusive to me. I mean, that's kind of the thing. You, you start off really, I think, every chapter with stories really from your dad's mm -hmm. life and hitting his service in the, in the military and just war stories, that, war stories. And, and all, but what I thought was also really interesting was you, you talk about it kind of as when I was a child in these situations, here's what I was observing. Mm -hmm. And so much of what you talk about in the book is not just it is. Yes, you you must do some things on your own, but what you can learn from everybody around you and what you learn yeah. from your dad and also those he served with. You know, I try to learn something new every day. And it's one of the reasons why I make sure I'm in the company of people who really are worthy of that. <laughs> so uh, I begin with recruiting your special forces because I think we all have people in our lives who don't belong there. And our good heartedness or maybe not being clear eyed on it, I'm not quite sure, but we let them keep company with us and we tell them our dreams. These are sometimes people who want what we have. You can't tell people your dreams if they want what you have. They don't have your back. So starting there was really important. And some of the very early lessons that my dad um, taught me, my sister, and would you know impart on anybody who would sit still long enough was, you know, special forces, when they go in to take out a guy like Osama bin Laden, they don't need 200 of them. They just need a couple dozen of really good, prepared mission artists. And... I implore everybody to take a look at their situation today and is there somebody in your life who is a drag on your energy, who is pulling you back, holding you back or not supporting you? Um, get rid of those people. And by the way, some of them are relatives and that gets awkward. And so in the book I talk about how to separate yourself from people who don't belong in your constellation uh, as much as they are now. That is so important because we only have a finite amount of energy. Who we, who we hang with, who we share with is really important. And then that reciprocal nature of watching your friends back or your special forces member, inner circle squad, hashtag squad goals is one uh, that we see on Twitter a lot. But it's reciprocated, you know? We want to be clutch for that other person too as they reach for their dreams. So you'll notice that the circle gets smaller and smaller. And the science that I talk about in the book that the military knows is that in very tiny units, people become a lot like the five people they spend most of their time with. That's huge. That's a lot to give away. So you've really got to make sure that that's what it needs to be in terms of that inner circle squad unit. So in answer to your question about starting out each chapter with stories from my dad and how it was my perspective as